Hello everyone, and welcome to part 3 of the Breath of the Wild cell shading tutorial series. Before we start doing anything, I think it's probably a good time for us to start turning our material into node groups. So let's select everything between the texture nodes and the material output node, and go to add group make group. Now you'll notice our inputs here are reversed, so let's sort this out. Let's go and hit N to open our properties panel, go to group and we'll switch these inputs so now they're in top to bottom order. Let's name the top one ALB for albedo texture, and the bottom one NRM for normal map. So change the normal map to use the vector type. And now we're going to add three new inputs. So hit the plus sign three times. We'll name this one smoothness. Change this to a float type. We'll make this one metal. Also make it a float. And this one will be rubber. And make that float. And now we'll add another input at the bottom. We will call this one sun color. We'll change it to a color type. We'll add another one. Call it sun strength. We'll change that to a float, add another one, call it indirect lighting color, make that into a color type, add one more, we'll name it indirect lighting strength, and make that a float. And now you can see what that's done is we've made a bunch of inputs that we can use in the shader later. Let's just make this a little bigger so we can see it, see the full name. Now to exit the node group, we can hit tab. And you can see we have this new node here. Uh, everything we've done in this entire tutorial series, it's all within this node group now. So we can just bring this over here. And we can hit N to get rid of the properties panel. Well, the reason we put everything into a node group is because when we copy this material to every other object, all the changes that we make will update across every single material. If we make a mistake or we want to tweak something, we don't have to change it in every material individually. So this is both a time saver and it just makes the whole thing look nicer and more compact. We can also rename it... Uh, let's name this Breath of the Wild Clothing Shader. We can also make this bigger so we can see the full name. Okay, now let's make a node group that will help us control the lighting. Uh, we'll add a new RGB node, add input RGB, and we'll also add a new value node. We'll set the color of the RGB node to white, we'll change the value to 2, select both of these, duplicate them, and we'll set the value to 1 on this bottom one. And now we will connect all of these to our sun color, sun strength, the indirect lighting color, and indirect lighting strength. Then we select all of these nodes, make them into a node group. Now we will name the node group. Uh, let's name this lighting controller. We'll just make this a little bigger. Okay, our material looks pretty good now. But you'll notice we haven't used that SPM texture yet. And this is where things get a little complicated. So I'm going to bring up an example real quick, just to show you guys the different types of SPM textures we'll be using. I've actually skipped ahead to a finished version of the shader to show you guys what each texture does. So let's look at the current SPM texture on the shirt here. And you can see this is just a grayscale texture. So this one is only used for smooth shading. So it gets plugged in directly into the smoothness mask input on our node group. And when I do that, you can see we actually added those sketch lines to our clothing here. So if the texture is named SPM or SPM1, that means it just gets plugged right into the smoothness. There are also some things that come with a texture called SPM2. 
you'll see this on any item that has metal or rubber on it. So you're going to want to plug SPM1 into this with this mask, and SPM2 we plugged into either the metal or rubber mask, depending on the context of the item. In this case, it's a rusty shield, so we're going to plug it into metal. Now, if your SPM texture is colored like this one, then it means that this is actually a channel packed texture, meaning that the SPM1 and SPM2 textures have been combined into the red, green, and blue channels. So what you'll want to do here is you'll want to change it to channel packed, so that way your alpha channel isn't cutting out any of the color and the texture. And then you'll want to add a separate XYZ node. Now you can see, if we check the inputs here, you can see we have our smoothness mask, and we also have our metal or rubber mask here. So we can plug this, the X, into the smoothness mask, and we can plug the Y into either the metal or rubber mask. In this case, since it's metal armor, it's the metal mask. So with all that in mind, we see that the SPM texture on the tunic is actually a grayscale texture, so we know that it gets connected to the smoothness input on the node group. Now, obviously it won't do anything right now since we haven't made up the part of the shader that actually utilizes the SPM textures, but with that said, let's go back to the game so I can show you an example of how an SPM texture is supposed to be used. So the first use for the SPM texture is actually these sketch lines. You can see if I get close, you can see the sketch line effect on the shoulder here, and you can also see it on the soup ladle. And you can also see on Sidon over here, you can see that he also has sketch lines as well. So a cool thing about these sketch lines is they're actually specular highlights, so they move when you move the camera, just like normal reflected light on a shiny surface. And sure, if you want to do regular cell shaded specular highlights, you'd probably just make a glossy node. You would add a shader to RGB, connect the two, and then add a multiply add node. Set this 10,000, clamp it, and uh, sure that works fine, but if we add a cube and we incorporate shadows into this, you can see the effect starts to break down. When we have something casting a shadow, the specular goes away, and we want to make sure the specular highlight is persistent even in shadow, so we can fix this with vector math. So let's just go ahead and delete this cube here, delete this setup we just made, and we can go back into our shader by clicking this icon up here at the top right of the node group. You can see our whole node setup is still here. So now we're going to make a new geometry node. Then we'll add a vector math node and set it to dot product connect the incoming output to the dot product as well as the normal map. We'll duplicate the dot product node and turn it into a multiply node. Connect the normal map to the multiply node and multiply by two. Multiply the dot product by the multiply. Make a new subtract node We'll subtract the incoming by this multiply node, and then we'll make a new multiply node, we'll set this to negative one. Now you might be asking, what the heck is all this? Well this is actually the math equivalent to a reflection texture coordinates node. So if you see, reflection coordinates here. And this is what we just made. But the difference is now we can use a normal map with it. And now, if we add a separate XYZ node and a math node, connect the Z channel, change this to multiply add, set this to 10,000, clamp it, bring down the value maybe to negative 9,000. You can see we have a math based 
specular highlight. The only problem now is the math always assumes that the light source is always in the dead center of the sky. So we actually want to tie this to our sunlight. So let's add a new vector rotate node. And we're going to put it right between the multiply node and the separate XYZ. Let's connect our combine XYZ light direction node. Oops. Change that to Euler first. Now connect the light direction. Set it to invert. Now you can see when we rotate this light, it works exactly as we need it to. Let's just go back to our nodes now. We'll delete the multiply add node because I just use that for demonstration. And we're going to put this whole setup into a frame. So let's add a new frame here. Let's get everything squished together. And we'll name this frame specular vector. We'll change the color to whatever we used yet. Let's do like a dark blue. And now we need our sketch lines texture. So let's add a new texture node. We'll open our texture. I'll leave a link for this in the video description so you guys can download that. We'll add a new UV map node, set that to layer two. We'll connect that to the texture node. Next, we'll add a new mapping node. We'll set the Z rotation to negative 60. Duplicate this, set the Z rotation to zero on this one, and set the scale on the Y axis to 7.5. And that should give us our nice lines on our mesh here. And let's just put this into a frame as well. We'll name this specular sketch texture. We'll make this like a deep orange. And then we can add a new math node. Set that to multiply. We can multiply our sketch texture with the Z output of our specular vector. Duplicate that multiply node. We'll add a new group input node and connect the smoothness output to the multiply node. We can also hit control H to scrunch everything down. Now get a multiply add node and set it to multiply by 20 and then add by negative 0.5. Clamp that. Now you can see we have something close to the sketch line effect that we need. Now let's duplicate that multiply add node and connect whole setup, multiply by 10, and subtract by 1. So that way, we have two sizes for the sketch texture, so that way we can layer both on top of each other. And I'm going to add a new multiply node, and unclamp that, set it to multiply by 0.25, make a new add node. We can add the two of these together. Now you can see we have our little highlights in there. Now we can make a new multiply node. Set this to 0.1. And then make a new mix RGB node. Put this into color 2 input. Push this to add. Set the fact to 1.0. And we will connect our main setup to the add node. And you can see now that we have our sketch specular highlights. Let's just put this into a frame now.
and we will just call this sketch lines specular setup. We'll make this maybe a maybe a lighter orange. We'll move this in with the rest of the setup. Okay. Now we move on to how metals work. For metal objects, there's a couple things we need to look at here. The first thing being this shiny area right here. When you orbit around the armor, you can see the light almost has no regard for the sunlight direction since it's able to orbit all the way around the armor. But if you look closely, when you're looking at the reflection from the same direction the light is coming from, you can see the reflection on the armor sort of snap to this position until we turn the camera far enough, then it unsnaps. Another thing you'll see is the reflection snapping is only tied to the z-axis, like when I'm moving the camera left and right. Because when I move the camera up and down, you'll see the light still follows the camera like normal. The last thing about metals is they're actually made of three layers. We have the base albedo color, and the reflection, and a slightly more contrasted version of the reflection on top of that. There's also only one rim light present here, which is the fade rim light. And that's the third rim light we made in the previous video. You can see right here on the helmet. You can see when you turn the camera, it fades away. For this, I actually grabbed the flame breaker helmet, which I've already fixed up like we did in the first video. So what we're going to want to do is select the whole node setup that we've been working on from the tunic here. We're going to hit Control C to copy everything. Usually you want to spam it because Blender's a little finicky with it. And then we'll go to the helmet material. We'll delete everything and hit Control V to paste. The material is still using the original textures from the tunic though, so let's just go back and add in our new textures. So this is the albedo texture for the helmet. We'll add the SPM texture and you'll see our SPM texture is colored so that means it is a channel packed texture so we have to change this texture to channel packed in the alpha settings here. We'll also have to add a separate XYZ node. Connect that to the separate XYZ. And you can see in the X channel we have our smoothness so connect that to the smoothness input on the clothing shader. And the Y channel we have our metal mask so plug that into the metal input on the clothing shader. And now we will add our normal map and set it to non-color. Now we'll go back into our clothing shader and we'll start adding our nodes for the metal reflections. We're going to add a new geometry node. We're going to add a vector rotation. Take the incoming output put that into the vector rotate and change this to z-axis because this is only going to affect the z-axis. Let's add a new value node and we'll add a new math node. Keep this as an add node. Connect that to the angle. And we'll type into the math node pi times 0.5 so it'll be half of pi. We'll also set the vector rotate node to invert. We'll add in a new separate XYZ node. We'll add a combine XYZ node and connect the Y output to the Z input. Add in a new vector rotate node and set this to Euler. We'll connect the combine XYZ to the rotation and connect our normal map to the vector rotate node. And then we'll add a layer weight. And now if you just look at the facing output out of the layer weight and you adjust the value node, you can see we have sort of the basis for our metal reflection. We just need to get a Z-rotation driver from the sunlight to put in this value node. Except, normally, we would just use our light direction node for this. The combine XYZ node. 
but our sun doesn't currently have a usable Z rotation value for this effect to work. The reason is that our sun direction is currently using the local rotation of the sun, but we actually need the world rotation values. You can see here, when I rotate the sun, just a little bit, even though I'm not really rotating it that much, the Z value still goes up a lot, which would definitely ruin the effect. To mitigate this, I actually made a little hack. There might be a better way to do this, but this is the way I found to be the easiest. So let's just add a new empty. Let's do the arrows empty. And go to the object properties. And we'll just name this object sun Z. Then we'll go to the constraints tab. We'll add a new constraint, copy location. And we'll use our eyedropper tool to select our sun. And then we'll add another constraint, a track to constraint. Use the eyedropper tool again for our sun, and then we'll set the target Z, tick that on. Now you can see when I rotate our sun, the empty moves with it. Even when I rotate it up and down, it still only follows it on the Z axis. Now we'll go back to our material, back into our node group. And our value node here, we'll do add driver, set that to VAR, and we will add in our sun Z into the object input. Change this from X location to Z rotation. We will keep this as auto Euler and world space. And now you can see if we look at our helmet, the little black spot here actually snaps to our sun direction, just like in the game. And if we turn our sun, you can see it follows with it. It snaps perfectly, goes up and down, and doesn't move left and right. Now let's take our metal reflection setup, and we'll put that into a frame. We will name the frame Orbital Specular. We'll make this maybe a deep purple. We'll push the nodes together a bit. Now we can start making the actual effect. So let's add a new math node. Set this to multiply add. Let's clamp it and multiply by negative 100. Add 10. Copy that. Connect the facing to that. We'll do times negative 10 plus 2.5. That way you see, we have our faded version of the specular reflection and our sharper version of it. Now let's add a new multiply node. Take off clamping. Multiply this by 0.5. Duplicate this, change it to add. We will add the two together. Clamp that. Now we will add a new multiply node and turn off clamping. Connect that up. We'll add a new group input. Connect the smoothness to the multiply. Control H to make that a bit smaller. And we will add a new value node. Set this to 10. Add in a new mix RGB node. Set this to multiply. Connect our value node to the multiply node. Connect our multiply node to the factor input of the multiply node, the mix RGB. 
now we will take the base world light output and we'll drag this all the way down here and we'll stick this into color one of the multiply node that way we're able to source the shadows that we had already made from the base world light now let's add a new mix RGB node set this to add Add a new value node, set this to 0.1, connect that to the color 2 input, and we will head over to our fade rim light. We'll take the multiply node here, take the output, and we'll drag it down to our mix RGB node and put it in the factor. So that way we're able to source our fade rim light from that. And now you can see. Our metal actually looks pretty close to how it looks like in the game. You can orbit around it and the light follows. It snaps exactly where it needs to. And wherever you turn the light, it will always snap to that light direction. Just like it does in the game. So now let's get that metal set up into a frame now. Add a new frame. Select all of this. And we'll name the frame, we'll just name it metal. We'll change the color to, what color haven't we used yet? Let's do like a, uh, a hot pink. That's probably good. Yeah, let's bunch these up. this right under our specular setup. And finally, we need to combine our original cloth sketch line setup with the new metal setup, so that way the metal only turns on when you plug the metal mask in from the SPM texture. So we'll just add in a new mix RGB node. We'll connect the metal setup to color two, connect the sketch line setup to color one, and we will take a new group input node and connect the metal output to the factor in the mix node. Also hit control H to make that a bit smaller. And then we will connect that mix RGB node to the group output. And let's just preemptively make a new mix node, connect that, we'll select the group input node, actually hit Control H again. We'll connect the rubber output to the mix node factor. And I'm just doing this preemptively because rubber is actually the next thing we're going to be doing. So let's just get these into a frame. these closer together and we will name this sketch slash metal slash rubber mixer and what color haven't we used yet I'm actually running out of colors let's do a uh, let's do a dark green sketch this up so now let's go back to the game and I can show you guys how to do rubber. There actually isn't a whole lot that goes into making rubber. It's basically just a reflection that always faces the camera, similar to the metal setup but a lot more simple. You can see the reflection right here, if I orbit around, pretty much always faces the camera. And just like the metal, rubber only uses one rim light as well. It's the fade rim light, you can see it on Link's arm here. You can see it there, when I turn the camera disappears. Back in Blender, you can see I've gone ahead and imported the rubber suit, and I've also copied our node setup to it. One thing I should point out is that this armor actually uses two different materials. The belt buckles use the metal setup, so I have the SPM texture plugged into the metal input on the shader, and the rubber parts here use the rubber input on the shader here. You will see a lot of gray, but that's just because it's a stand-in for the rubber node setup that we'll be making right now. So we'll go back into our node group, 
we will add a multiply add node. Multiply add. And connect our layer weight facing output to the multiply add node. And we will set this to multiply by negative 10,000 and add 1,000. Clamp that. You can see we're already getting our shine here. We will add a mix RGB node. Set it to add. And connect our multiply add node into the factor. Go up to our back rim light node setup. Take the output from our multiply RGB node. And plug it into the add node. Scooch this up a little bit. Add a new value node. Set this to 0 0.1. And we'll add a new group input node. And a multiply math node. We'll multiply the value node by the smoothness. And then connect the multiply node into the add node. Also hit Control H to shorten up that group input node. We'll duplicate the mix RGB add node. Now we'll go up to our fade rim light. We will source this multiply node here into our mix RGB add node, right into the factor. We'll also duplicate this value node here and plug that into the add node. Let's also clamp both of these add nodes. And now we can take all of this and put it into a frame. Bunch these up. We'll name this rubber. And we will make the color into, let's say, an olive green. Yeah, that works. Now we'll drag this right under our metal setup. We'll take the output of this add node here, and we will bring it into the color two of this mix node here. And that'll do it for the rubber, which means all of our specular setups are now complete. And in the next video, I'll go over sunlight shadows and colored lights. So I'll see you guys soon.